Okay. Just coming up on the one kilometer mark. Hiking the steep sections today. Started my chrono, so I will have an excellent idea of the length of the recording. I think I should be able to average around nine minutes. But in this first kilometer, in this first kilometer, I have already done one large flight of stairs and one hike section on this hill. Very soon I'll be running to the sender, the trailhead. Excuse me, that was my porridge. Over to my right, I can see the North Beach as I approach the crest of the last road before I hit the real trail. Today is Sunday, so today is probably the first Sunday this month that I have recorded on a Sunday. I'm normally doing my Sunday show on Saturday for one reason or another. Today's episode will be called Return to Sender. This will be my last play in the playground that I have been using on and off all month. Since Norma arrived in Spain, I have been doing quite a lot more hiking. It would be a shame to not spend some quality time with her. She misses not only me when I'm away, but she also misses her exercise programs. She does Pilates. She does pickleball. She does yoga. So the least I can do is share some of my exercise time with her. Hola. It is a beautiful, calm, sunny day here. And I think I will probably have three or four more days this week with this kind of weather. Today, I saw Norma off to the airport. She flies back via Amsterdam and then Amsterdam to Edmonton and then Edmonton to Victoria. So that is why I have returned to the sender. 
she and I hiked here a couple of times. But today, I have dialed in eight kilometers, five hilly miles, and out and back. It'll probably take me pretty close, if not all the way, to the meteorological... Uh, what's it called? I guess it's the ball. The meteorological ball. As they hike another steep section. Nora and I had about a week together in Cuyera and a week, just under a week, in Valencia. We were planning to stay here till yesterday morning, but my brother has rented the flat where I'm staying to some English people, and uh, I noticed that the router was running a little low on the data. So, rather than top up the data, we switched off the router and headed in to Valencia to spend some quality time with my brothers, their family members, and my cousin Paul and his wife from Norway are going to be walking past a group of four, two adultos y dos niños. This is always a TH section for me. I think my bandana scares the children here. They're not used to seeing men with bandanas. It's kind of weird, really. We always associate bandanas with pirates and gypsies, but I guess there is some kind of, not evil, but suspicious connotations to those two professions, piracy and gypsy. I know here there used to be quite an issue with the gypsies. They were moving up, up, up from the south of Spain, looking for richer pastures in the north, but now that is the general trend of migration for everybody. Everybody seems to be moving north. Most of the sub-Saharan Africans that were here two years ago have already gone to see Ms. Merkel. There's noticeably way less Africans in Cuyera than there were a couple of years ago. I think most of the Syrian boat people are heading via Malta and Sicily to Italy and then up north would be kind of out of their way to come all the way to Morocco to cross 
the narrow section of the Met. Well, I'm still behind my pace at nine, which is okay. My first split was ten. So, just checking my watch, eleven minutes of recording. When I get to the top of this climb, I will have a bit of a running section to do. So Norma went back today. I go back next Tuesday, I believe. Monday or Tuesday. Not this week, but the following week. So like a week tomorrow, I will be packing my bags for the final time and heading to the airport. I think my flight leaves around 2 in the afternoon, local time, so I should be able to take the metro. Norma and I went in this morning in a taxi, believe it or not. I have only been in a taxi about 20 times in my entire life. Really, I don't know the luxury of the taxi. I have more of a train and bus kind of person. That's if I can't ride my bike or run. My eyesight is getting quite bad. Just lately I'm having trouble focusing with my right eye. I've noticed that since I've started reading a book. All right, I'm gonna start running now. If I close my left eye, even with my reading glasses, it is still blurry. Being Sunday, today shouldn't be too much of a lonely solo run. I've already seen a family group, and I'm approaching a couple of hikers coming my way. Those shots that you can hear in the distance is a sports club, and I believe they do clay pigeon shooting. now, going from hammock to hammock, dodging the bushes and the rocks as I negotiate my way across this lunar landscape devoid of trees. That is what I miss every year when I come here the majestic Douglas fir trees of Mount Doug and the soft dirt trails. There's nothing soft or dirt about these rugged hiking trails. This is more accurately, accurately described as a, as a spike a speed hike, a pike, a power hike. I'm listening out for the girl, the ice smooth run girl, to tell me that I've reached three kilometers. Then I will have one more to do before I turn around and head back. 
even with all the hiking that I did with Mrs. Jackal, this morning I managed to log this week altogether about nine hours, 40 minutes. So basically, I really only needed 20 minutes today for my 10 hour total, but that's because I have done about 15 kilometers of slightly less strenuous activities, I will go and do a little bit more today than my allotted 20 minutes. I'm probably past that already. I've got 16 minutes on the clock. And I had 10 minutes or so on the first kilometer. 16 is the more relevant number. That's how long I've been speaking with you, dear listeners. Last night I heard Jim's latest submission to the Podosphere. I forget the title of the uh, episode, but I believe it was quite an optimistic title, which is encouraging because during said episode, he alluded to some medical issues that he had to address, which left him woefully behind on his marathon training. I was also very surprised and pleased to hear that he included my submission to the end of his show, but you can hear the volume difference. I know it's just a matter of tweaking the volume controls on your playback device, he probably didn't notice the volume discrepancies, but both his and my submissions were clearly audible, but that is the advantage that the Sony has over the phone, it has a louder recording level which is very good if you are sharing your run with somebody else. It means that their input can be heard. The phone is fine, but slightly quieter than the Sony. I won't bore you anymore with technical details. I throw these little nuggets of information in for the likes of Steve, Norman, Jim, excuse me, David Foss, and my good friend, Mr. Gwynn. He has had to deal with lots of different recording levels. That's what he does mostly when he puts the shows together, he tries to balance the levels of the recordings. I know he can't do much with a very windy, noisy recording, but he tries to get them all to the same level. That is admirable on his part. I have, actually, I think I had three submissions in the latest The Extra Mile podcast. I've got a bit of downhill coming up, and there's a couple of hikers coming up towards me. Hola, hola. Buen día.
Yeah, they're like me. They were hiking up where I would have been hiking up on the return. The whole thing is to try and keep the heart as happy as possible on this undulating trail to maximize on endurance you have to keep your heart as happy as possible there's no point wrestling with the terrain very soon you will have to rest because you will be extremely tired not to mention you might have fallen over once or twice and drawn blood so it's a combination of terrain and caution that keeps one's pace down on this kind of terrain the older I get the more cautious I become as my eyesight fades. This section here looks remarkably like a pavement, but it is natural. I will take a picture of it to illustrate. I already took a few pictures from the train window and from the station on the way here. I will put together a Google slideshow when I get back to Eddie's bar. I already switched on the router and uh, that works. I checked the weather to see if the internet was connected and it was, but I will not use any more of the five gigs that remain on the on the said device it'll be topped up on the seventh with another i don't know what he's putting on i think it's 30 gigs a month but norma and i managed to get through 25 gigs in four weeks I know a lot of that was me, what with uploading videos and surfing a lot of the internet, which I tend to do rather than watch TV. TV has lost its interest. I do not follow any sport. I just cannot tolerate commercial sport. All right, now I have a nice bit of run section to do. This is where I'll start to lower my average pace. Coming back is going to be pretty slow too because it is an undulating course. So what I was doing as a down will be an up on the way back. If I had more time to run today, I would make a loop out of it and then I would have the promenade. the promenade to do to make to make up my pace that's where I can pull a six minute pace between six and seven would easily bring me back to an overall eight and a half minute for this outing but because I'm only giving myself just over an hour of running today. I will double back on myself after 
the girl tells me that I have completed four kilometers. I can see the meteorological ball from here. I can also see another couple of hikers coming towards me. This kind of stop-start running is very typical of a lot of 100-mile events that I have taken part in. You cannot guarantee an unbroken stretch of running. Hola. Hola. I'm saying hi to the dog as well. That's why I was so chirpy with my greeting. Dogs react to tone of voice more than anything else. Conspiratorial whispering would definitely raise some suspicion from the canine fraternity. Now I have to try and remember to stay on the more major side of the trail system here because a couple of recordings ago I took you on a bit of a white knuckle scramble. I lost the main trail and had to do some rock hopping. But I punched in trail running as my activity today because for this one the cadence tells all. When I'm running, as Suzanne will tell you, I am consistently hovering around what is it now? 80, 82, 84 steps per minute. When I'm walking with Norma, it's more like 60. And when I'm scrambling over the rocks, it drops to around 40 steps per minute. The other thing that I'm obliged to do in this kind of terrain is to deactivate the auto pause because quite often the GPS loses its signal having to rely exclusively on the satellite signals. Occasionally if I'm behind a large boulder I might lose the signal which will give me an inaccurate readout. Not so much the distance, but the time would be a little on the happy side, if you know what I mean. But I think I managed to stay on the right trail today, which is very encouraging. When I get the halfway to my goal, a reminder, I will turn around and take another photograph. Hopefully I'll be near the ball, which has momentarily disappeared behind the next hummock. Yesterday, Norma and I had a fantastic plate of mussels that I cooked. Mussels are incredibly fresh and incredibly cheap here. For two euros, I think, I got, I think it was a kilo of mussels, clean mussels, and we still had about a quarter of a bottle of white wine, some parsley, and uh, quite a nice knob of unsalted butter, of which, along with some freshly ground 
black pepper is all you need for moule marinière, one of my specialities from the days when I was a chef in Quebec. This is probably going to be my last climb before the turnaround. Such a pleasure to be out of the howling gales of earlier on this month. I really dreaded having a whole month of strong winds to contend with. Another reason I went back today to Cuyera after seeing Norma off at the airport was because I still had to make up the beds, empty the fridge, bring home to Valencia any leftover booze. It's enough that we leave the data on the router for the tenants. They're going to spend a month in the flat that I will live at. They Kate for the last time today and then I'll be returning to Valencia to uh, finish my training in the river park the Turia river park where I have been filming and running a fair bit the last week I told Norma that I would email her when I vacated the flat for the final time to tell her that all was well. All right, so that beep reminds me that it's now beer time. I try not to drink any alcohol before 12 o'clock, before noon. It was a tradition that Alan and I established last year. Talking of Alan, I will be seeing him in about 10 days' time in Toronto. Hopefully he'll listen to this episode and uh, he will learn that I expect to see him where I met him on the outward trip. He parked the car at Pearson International and uh, he came into the airport building and he figured that if he goes any further into the building, he might miss me in the crowd. But uh, that was a good plan because I just headed out of the airport, hoping that I would meet him just before the exit to the street. So that is where I hope to see him again when I return. But I will make sure that he gets the message by emailing, emailing him the details of my flight. I'm now on the town side of the ridge. You can probably hear the traffic in the distance. That is to my right. The ocean is to my left on the other side of this ridge. I have now taken the correct trail, which will speed up my progress considerably as I head towards the ball. When I get my message to turn, I will take a picture of the ball if it's still visible. I'm going through the baby iris field at the moment. This year, because the month started considerably wetter than last year, the irises have really 
take it off. They're really quite, quite common. Some years you see one or two. This year they're in groups of five or six. On my return, it'll basically be downhill, but just as rocky and just as treacherous as this leg of my out and back. I'm coming up on 36 minutes. I'm coming up on my turnaround point and that will be 12 minute kilometers, which is barely faster than the average walking pace. A pace that you could not maintain on this terrain. 36, 35. I will continue until the girl tells me to take that picture and to turn around. Any second now, she will speak to me. Last hike. There you go. Bye bye from the sender.